Gauri was a beautiful, delicately nurtured child of an old and wealthy family. Her husband Parish had recently, by his own effort, improved his critical circumstances. So long as he was poor, Gauri's parents had kept their daughter at home, unwilling to surrender her to privation. So she was no longer young when at last she went to her husband's house. And Parish never felt quite that she belonged to him. He was an advocate in a small western town and had no close kinsman with him. All his thought was about his wife so much so that sometimes he would come home before the rising of the court. At first, Gauri was completely doubtful and she was failed to understand why he came back suddenly. Sometimes, too, he would dismiss one of the servants without reason. None of them ever suited him long. Especially if Gauri desired to keep any particular servant because she was useful, that man was sure to be got rid of forthwith. The high-spirited Gauri greatly resented this, but her resentment only made her husband's behavior still stranger. When at last, Parish, unable to contain himself any longer, began in secret to cross-question the maid about her. The whole thing reached his wife's ears. She was a woman of few words, but her pride raised within like a wounded lioness at this insult, and this mad suspicion swept like a destroyer's sword between them. Parish, as soon as he saw that his wife understood his motive, felt no more delicacy about taxing Gauri to her face. And the more his wife treated it with silent contempt, the more did the fire of his jealousy consume him. Deprived of wedded happiness, the childless Gauri betook herself to the consolation of religion. She sent for Paramananda Swami, the young preacher of the prayer house hard by, and formally acknowledging him as her spiritual preceptor, asked him to expound the Gita to her. All the wasted love and affection of her woman's heart was poured out in reverence at the feet of her guru. No one had any doubts about the purity of Paramananda's character. All worshipped him. And because Parish did not dare to hint any suspicion against him, his jealousy ate its way into his heart like a hidden cancer. One day, some trifling circumstance made the poison overflow. Parish reviled Paramananda to his wife as a hypocrite and said, Can you swear that you are not in love with this crane that plays the ascetic? Guri sprang up like a snake that has been trodden on and, maddened by his suspicion, said with bitter irony, And what if I am? At this Parish for which went off to the courthouse and locked the door on her. In a white heat of passion at this last outrage, Gauri got the door open somehow and left the house. Paramananda was poring over the scriptures in his lonely room in the silence of noon. All at once, like a flash of lightning out of the cloudless sky, Gauri broke in upon his reading. You here? questioned her guru in surprise. Rescue me, O oh my lord, guru, said she. 
from the insult of my home life and allow me to dedicate myself to the service of your feet with a stem rebuke parmananda sent gori back home but i wonder whether he ever again took up the snapped thread of his reading Parish finding the door open on his return home asked who has been here no one his wife replied i have been to the house of my guru why asked parish pale and red by turns because i wanted to from that day parish had a guard kept over the house and behaved so absurdly that the tale of his jealousy was told all over town the news of the shameful insult that were daily that were daily hit on his disciple disturbed the religious meditation of paramananda he felt he ought to leave the place at once at the same time he would not make up his mind to forsake the tortured omen who can how the poor ascetic got through those trouble days and nights at last one day the imprisoned gauri got a letter my child it ran it's true that many holy women have left the world to devote themselves to god should it happen that the trials of this world are depriving your thoughts away from god i will god's help rescue this handmaid for the holy service of his faith if you desire you may meet me by the tank in your garden bar at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon gori hid the letter in the loops of her hair at noon next day When she was undoing her hair before the bar, she found that the letter was not there. Could it have fallen on? To the bed and got into her husband's hands. She wondered. At first, she felt like a kind of fierce pleasure in thinking that it would enrage him and then she could not bear to think that this letter own as a hell of deliverance on her head might be de- defiled by the touch of insolent hands with swift step she hurried to her husband's room he lay groaning on the floor with eyes rolled back and foam mouth she detached the letter from its clenched fist and sent quickly for a doctor the doctor said it was a case of apoplexy the patient had died before his arrival that very day as it happened parish had an important appointment away from home Paramananda had found this out and accordingly had made his appointment with Gauri. To such a depth had he fallen. When the widowed Gauri caught sight from the window of a guru st- stealing like a thief to the side of the pool, she lowered her, her eyes as at a lightning flash. And in that l- flash, she saw clearly what a fall he had been. The guru called Gauri. I am coming. She replied. When Parish friends heard of his death and came to assist in the last rites, they found the dead body of Gauri lying beside that of her husband. She had poisoned herself. All were lost in admiration of the wifely loyalty she had shown in her sati. A loyalty rare indeed in this. He's generated things.